Welcome to another video. I have a question here that requires that we convert this trig expression or trig function into a polynomial. Now, this is not calculus, so we're not using Taylor series or power series or some kind of um, calculus concept. It is something you should be able to do before you enter a calculus classroom because this is pre-calculus. So, give it a shot or just keep watching the video. Let's get into it. Whenever you require to transition between a trig function and a polynomial to go from theta to x, one thing you should always have on your mind is I would need a right triangle. Because, you know, it is from a triangle, you can say, okay, let the sides be some kind of X and I have an angle. And then you can see what kind of relationship or interactions they could have. So, looking at this, this is a bit complicated. The fact that this and this are not the same and there's a 2 here. So, what I'm going to do, and there's nothing you can do about this 2. So, what I'm going to do is... I'm going to make it simpler for myself because I know that the argument of a cosine is always an angle. So everything inside this bracket is an angle. So I'm going to say that what I have here is actually equal to the cosine of theta. So that means theta represents everything I have here. Now remember, in a polynomial, you don't want to see any theta. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to connect these two and then try to write my theta in terms of x. So I have um, theta is equal to, let's say, let. So let's say, I'm blocking it. Let's say let theta be equal to this expression here so that what I have would be um, 2 inverse sine of x minus 1. Okay, but I need to get my expression in terms of x. So what can I do? I can divide both sides by 2 so that theta over 2 is equal to inverse sine of x minus 1. Okay, I still can't deal with inverse sign because I have to get rid of this. I just need a connection between this and this. So what can I do? I can undo this inverse sign by taking the sign of both sides. Remember that inverse sign can be, can be undone by just taking the sign. So see what we do. I'm going to say if I take the sign of theta over 2, it would be equal to if I take the sign of the inverse sign of x minus 1. So watch this. We know that these two are inverse functions, so this guy is going to take this guy out. So what you have left is x minus 1. And what you have here is sine of theta over 2. So now I have something easy I can deal with because I can go now and make my right triangle. Okay, so let's make a right triangle here. I'm going to do it here. I don't care. So here, this is what we have. We have a right triangle, and the angle here is theta over 2. Theta over 2 is the angle. And we know that if you define sine, the sine of an angle is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. So it looks like this is the same thing as this over 1. That's how you read this. So the opposite is x minus 1. The hypotenuse is 1. That's what I'm going to do here. The opposite is x minus 1. The hypotenuse is 1. That's what we have. So I need to just find the third side, the missing side. Now this missing side, by Pythagorean identity, or Pythagorean theorem rather, I can say it is the square of this minus the square of this. Right? Absolutely. It's the square of this minus the square of this. So I'm going to say that. Let's do the work here. So it's going to be 1 squared minus x minus 1 squared. Okay? And then I'll take the square root eventually. So this is 1 minus, if I square this, it's going to be x squared minus 2x plus 1. And um, what does this give me? This gives me 1 minus x squared minus 2x, sorry, plus 2x minus 1. Okay, and what is that? 
that's just negative x squared plus 2x. Okay, so this is just minus x squared plus 2x. So this side is the square root of minus x squared plus 2x. I have found everything I need to answer my question. So let's get rid of this. The question we need to ask now is where are we going? Well, we're almost done because remember the polynomial we're looking for is basically the cosine of theta. f of x is the cosine of theta. So we come back and say f of x is the cosine of theta. Mm. But we don't have theta anymore in this triangle. What we have is theta over 2. So we have to find a way to write theta in terms of theta over 2, which will mean we have to use the double angle formula, which means we can write this to be the cosine of theta over 2 plus theta over 2. Because this is the same thing as theta, right? But we know that this is an angle sum. So you have to recall your angle sum from your trig class, okay? What does the angle sum for cosine say? Okay, this basically is the double angle formula. And you can just compute one. You can write it in terms of cosine. You can write it in terms of sine. But since I'm already using cosine here, I'm going to say that this is the same thing as 2 cosine squared theta over 2 minus 1. Is it minus 1? Yes, it's minus 1. That's it. So all I need is to find what cosine theta over 2 is, which I know I can get from this triangle, right? So where do we go from here? We need to compute this. So our f of x will be equal to 2 times what is um, cosine squared theta? Well, it's going to be cosine theta squared. What's cosine theta? It's adjacent over hypotenuse, which is going to be, let's rewrite this cosine theta over 2, everything squared minus 1, right? So let's finish this up. So if we compute our cosine theta, I actually want to do that here. This is 2 times, what is cosine theta over 2? Adjacent over hypotenuse, which is just this. It is the square root of negative x squared plus 2x, all squared minus 1. Well, if we square this, what do we get? It looks like f of x is going to be equal to 2 times the square of this. What's the square of this? Oh, the square root sign just disappears. So that's going to be minus x squared plus 2x. And here we're going to have minus 1. So f of x is equal to negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 1. So, this polynomial is the trig function. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.